Star Alliance. Everyone who flies and who travels, you know them. But how do they adapt so quickly and how do they thrive with the help of cloud and with intelligence during these very turbulent times? Jeremy Drury is the Director of Digital and Technology Services at Star Alliance. He's here to talk about all the ins and outs uh, from his cloud migration, but also his innovation journey. Jeremy, welcome. Thank you very much for letting me be here. You're welcome. So everybody knows that the airline industry has a very hard time and has been hit very hard. And every organization in the industry, they need to change. Can you give us an update on what Star Alliance does, but also the background in this context of moving to the cloud? Well, I think you introduced us quite well. Um, everyone who flies should know the Star Alliance. It's a, it's a group of 26 airlines with a market share of about around 25 uh, 25 percent of the commercial passenger traffic. Um, and um, we're, we're engaged between working with the members to help passengers improve their experience between the members of the alliance. And we're working. Uh, we work to improve their seamless their seamless experience. Um, both in airport customer experience, but also in loyalty. Um, and the move to the cloud has been a fantastic for us uh, in, 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 that, um, in, that, in that journey. We started off looking at this um, to, um, to improve our resiliency and our disaster recovery. That was in 2019 and even earlier 2018 in, in concept phase. And um, the, the result of that has been quite dramatic for us. Um, in terms of the now industry industry crisis that we're we are facing, so um, that that move to improve the resilience re resiliency and the disaster recovery has actually proved significant for us this year, and we've been able to use AWS to right size our um, our position as we've moved through 2020. During this pandemic, but also due to the pandemic, the volume in the travel movement decreased substantially. Um, how did cloud support Star Alliance in adapting to all these changes? We've actually seen reductions in message transactions of down to 20% of where we were last year. And uh, I'll refer back to what I said earlier. Um, the, the, having that amount of reduction in traffic uh, would have been very difficult for us to manage on an infrastructure basis um, in 2019 when we were still in a fixed data center environment. So the flexibility that AWS has provided us to right size into the into the crisis has been absolutely um, vital to where we wanted to where where we need to be right now. So we've had we've we've got the flexibility from the cloud to make sure that we're right sizing, um, which has brought with it significant cost benefits. Uh, the AWS team and our and our partners have been great to to right size and bring down our cost base this year, so that we can um, go through this go through this crisis and and come out shining in the other end. But we've also spent a little bit of time this year looking at how we can optimize our delivery processes using using the cloud services, so that when we do get back to a point when we when we want to deliver faster enhancements to the existing products that we have. Uh, we're going to be ready for that in, in 21 and 22 as the traffic picks back up. So, Jeremy, can you explain more detail? How did you migrate uh, to AWS? It was a long, pro a longer process. It, we did it over about nine months, and we initially started with a lift and shift, taking advantage of the fact that AWS have a lot of the services we had in our data center available to us. And then we've spent the time optimizing those uh, those processes to get the cost advantages and the infrastructure advantages of of the cloud. Actually, I'm very proud of the team um, today. They they finished a major migration, which was moving one of our larger products from an Oracle an Oracle database set to the Aurora um, RDB uh, uh, relational database um, uh, services uh, from AWS. So that's been a, a very nice close to uh, today and. Happy that I can I can I can give that credit to my team on this call. So you were talking about being agile and, and cost saving, which is very important. But on the other hand, if you want to survive and you want to thrive in the airline industry now, you also need to innovate. And to innovate, you need new products. Can you explain what type of new services you have developed the last couple of months and maybe already looking into the future, what's coming next in the coming months? It's it's a very exciting time in that regard because um, we've had to adapt and change uh, to the to the new realities. 
um, we see that there are new frictions in the in, in the customer journey, particularly around health and hygiene, and we're been, being very focused on providing a touchless journey for for the customers. We launched um, in the in September timeframe a product called the Digital Connection uh, Service. This is launched at Heathrow with our partner um, Singapore Airlines. The, um, the the product itself monitors uh, critical connections between um, two two of our members and provides customers who find themselves in a critical connect information to move through the move through the airport quicker, including in, indoor navigation and maps to allow that to happen and a digital certificate, which will allow those customers to get to the front of queues, which I'm sure um, a passenger at risk of missing their connection will really, uh, really appreciate. Um, last month, we uh, launched Star Alliance Biometrics. This is using uh, the face as a biometric identity uh, to allow customers to move through the, through the airport, through the customer touch points, check-in, security, boarding, and into lounge. Um, um, using their face as as their boarding pass, and and allows the customer to remain distant from those touch points in terms of having to engage with uh, with the physical devices in in the airport. What's particularly noted here is that um, we we we've pivoted and made sure that um, the, the biometric uh, template that we're using will identify the customer even if they're wearing a mask so the the customer does not have to interact with them with the mask itself to uncover their face yeah exciting to see that you can develop so quickly all this new type of services and and basically start playing a different role in the ecosystem and i think if you can survive or maybe even thrive in in the airline industry right now you can probably survive in, in any type of industry. So what can other organizations learn from your journey from the last months, which were probably very hectic? <clears throat> well, I think you can, I think first of, first of all, agility is something that um, the, our move to the cloud has allowed us to, uh, to have. Uh, we are bringing out new products and we, we want, and we will be enhancing our existing products between the members. Um, our, our systems currently run I give you I give you an idea of the of the quantity of messaging that we are looking at. Um, we track 1.2 million bags a day on a pre-COVID day. Uh, we are looking at 400,000 interline check-in uh, check-in messages being processed, and we also have a very we also make sure that our frequent travellers are um, being looked after, processing over 700,000 uh, redemption availability requests between our between our members. And those products will are continuing to be enhanced. And now that we have the flexibility of scale um, and the development speed that we've got with AWS, that's going to be a vast improvement for us. So I'm very much looking forward to that. If I was going to give some guidance to people who are moving to the cloud, um, I think it's very important to have two very strong partners involved in these in these um, in these conversations. First of all, you need a strong cloud partner, which we believe we found. Uh, and in AWS, um, but you also need a migration partner. And we work with um, Tata Consulting Services, who we have a wonderful relationship with. And putting those two with the brains that we have here in the office together um, has meant that the migration has run um, pretty pretty smoothly. So uh, that's been that's been something that we've we we've, we have enjoyed um, over the last eighteen months as we've taken this journey. Yeah, some great tips I think that you shared, but also yeah interesting experience to, to see how you can, as an organization, survive in such a difficult time. Jeremy, thank you very much for sharing this experience, this more or less a roller coaster from the past month, and give you insights in how cloud can help Star Alliance to adopt, but also to thrive. And for the audience, thank you for watching, and we see you next time.